Hello everybody, welcome to the How To Theatre. This talk is about how to get all the music and all the software you want absolutely free and completely legally, which is probably why there's so many of you here, because you're all cheapskates. Why do we want to use free software? Free software, well, I mean, when you're in a, a job interview or something like that, and they say, why do you want this job? It's always difficult to resist the temptation to say, because you're going to pay me money, and let's me buy things. But when it comes to free software, then that argument is fine. It's okay to want software to be free. What free software means is that you can tinker with it. You can try lots of different things. You can, you know, try different software packages, see which one suits you the most. So, how many of you here, can I get a brief show of hands, are using Windows? Yeah, the vast majority of you. Those of you who use Windows and you're completely happy with Windows because it feels free to you because you always, obviously you get it bundled in with your computer. You can just sort of sleep for a minute or so, but let me just tell you briefly about a free operating system that you can try called Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an alternative to Windows and uh, Windows, it might seem free to you guys because it gets rolled into the cost of your PC. But Windows sort of isn't that great. It's not wonderfully secure, um, and it doesn't get updated very often. It's usually four or five years between Windows updates. The alternative is, uh, is Linux, and uh, Linux is an operating system that was developed, well, it started out called Unix in 1970 when it was a, a proper non-open source bit of software. But then in 1984, they, uh, they turned it into a free project that people all over the world contributed to. You might have heard that Linux is difficult to use and you have to memorize a lot of command line options and, and things don't work with it, but there's a version of Linux called Ubuntu that's actually really, really good. It's very user-friendly and it gets updated every six months. And as a result, there's, uh, there's very few incompatibilities that you run into. So operating systems out of the way. The first bit of advice I give to somebody when, they, uh, when they've just got a new computer is not to use Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is a horrible bit of software. It's bloated, it's slow, it's insecure, it doesn't really do anything. Microsoft, uh, they're, they're getting very good at updating it and the most recent versions are a lot better. But for the majority of people, I'd recommend they install a different browser. The two I generally recommend are Firefox and Chrome. Now, Firefox is a... Uh, if, if we were analogizing with cars or something like that, then Firefox will be a family car with uh, cup holders and uh, heated seats and electric windows and all the features you want. Because what it does is it lets you download and install add-ons. Now these add-ons can, uh, can do all kinds of things, everything from taking snapshots of whatever page you're on to give you a weather forecast in the corner of your browser at all times, even uh, blocking all the adverts on a page. Now I imagine probably a lot of you are using uh, McAfee or Norton or Kaspersky or a bunch of these antivirus programs that you have to pay for. They're okay, but well, the worst thing you can do on your computer is, is just leave these trial versions installed that aren't updated. Just the ones that, you, that come pre-installed with most computers. What you should do instead is uninstall those and install either Avast or AVG. Both of them are completely free antivirus software that's updated constantly. Now, I'll, I'll clarify that slightly because they're free to the home user. It's okay for you to install them on your home computer and, and it'd be absolutely free. And the way they make their money is they hope that you like the experience so much on your computer that you then, when your company is looking for an antivirus product, they, they hope that you'll pick theirs. Let's talk about uh, email. I don't know, are any of you users of Google Mail, Gmail? show hands. It's, it's great because it's web-based and that means that there's just a, a window on the internet that you go to and then your user experience is the same no matter what computer you access it on across the world. There's no real need for you to change an email address or anything like that because Gmail is able to import emails from pretty much every single uh, email system there is out there. But its, it's nicest features are its user interface features. What it does is it, is it has a thing called conversations. It can track when a message is a reply to another message and it will just put those on one page together. No having to open multiple emails when you've got a long chain of email discussions going on. And especially on things like mailing lists, and that can be wonderful. Because you don't want a million emails clustering up in your inbox that you're not very interested in. They just all go on one page and you can ignore them if you want to. Or alternatively you can file them. Now, Gmail uses a slightly different filing system to what you'd use on in Microsoft Outlook or something like that. Whereas in Outlook, you'd, uh, you'd put your emails in folders, 
Gmail lets you tag your emails. And what that means is you can, uh, for example, I have tags for work and for uh, useful emails that I'll want to remember later, and registration emails. And it lets you put an email in more than one folder at once, which can be really, really useful for trying to sort things out. Most of you are probably here for is the music section. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of software called Spotify. Do you, are there any of you users of Spotify? One guy at the back there, one guy down there. Do you like it? Spotify is incredible. It has completely and utterly changed the way I interact with music. In, it's, it's my favourite bit of music software probably since Napster back in the 90s. It's, it's wonderful and it does what it does brilliantly. What it does is it streams music to you from the internet. Um, could I get a suggestion maybe from the front row of a favourite band? Someone shout out a favourite band that you like? Robbie Williams. Okay. What you do is there's a search box in the top left corner. So if I type in Robbie Williams, hopefully, there it is. It's that fast. Let's get that out of that just before it gets too loud. But Spotify is brilliant because it's, it's constantly adding new content to its library. It adds probably like 10,000 new tracks every single week. They're constantly expanding and, uh, and bringing up their back catalogue. But if you're not sure and you want something a bit more like a radio to play at you, then uh, I'd recommend another website called Last.fm. What Last.fm does is it installs a little plugin to your media player, and it, and it works with Spotify as well. And um, any tracks that you play will get logged by the system. And uh, there we go, there's Robbie Williams. And then it calculates charts based on which bands that you most listen to. And the, uh, it then uses that data to generate uh, what people listen to who, who like the bands that you do. So for example, if you listen to a lot of the Beatles and you never listen to the Rolling Stones, and there were lots of other people that listened to both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones together, it would recommend you the Rolling Stones. That's a very simplistic example. It's a lot more complicated than that. So that's music. Let's talk a little bit about video as well. If you've got video files on your computer that you want to play, there's a million different video file formats out there, and they're all proprietary, so it's very difficult to find one program that plays everything. But I found two. There's Media Player Classic, and there's VLC. Basically, VLC is much more of a video toolkit. Both of these applications are, are really, really powerful. They will play pretty much any video file that you throw at them. Stuff that Windows Media Player would normally just go, ah, what's this? Let's move on to photos. You'll suddenly find you've got pictures spewing out everywhere. Your computer gets instantly filled up. And uh, it can be quite difficult to organize the whole thing. What I recommend for pictures is a program called Picasa. Now, Picasa is developed by Google. And uh, I'm just going to boot it up and show you a little bit. I haven't got loads of photos on this computer, but uh, you can see a little bit. What it does is uh, it categorizes it by the folders you put them in. There's options to crop it, straighten it, or reducing a red eye on photos. If you want something a little bit more powerful, if you're a bit more of a sort of imaging pro, then uh, you might be thinking of Photoshop, and Photoshop is ridiculously expensive. It costs 200 quid to buy Photoshop, if not more. I don't know how much it is at home. Um, but it's a lot of money, several hundred pounds. And there's a free alternative that the open source community has developed. It's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. Um, though, like Photoshop, it's very, very complicated. Because it's got all that power, sometimes when you look at it, you don't know, uh, you don't know where to start. And uh, so what I'd recommend for most people is a halfway program, which is called Paint.net. Paint.net is uh, what well, sort of pushes itself as an upgrade to the default paint program you get with Windows, Microsoft Paint. It's a great middle ground option. And then lastly, let's talk a little bit about instant messaging. Um, one real problem with instant messaging is that everyone's on different networks. You might have friends that are on uh, MSN Messenger, and uh, other friends that are on Yahoo Messenger, and other friends that are using Google Chat, other friends are on Facebook Chat. It's a real pain trying to get one application that will do everything. But I found it, and it's called Pigeon. What you do in, uh, in Pigeon is you sign in, and all your contacts, every single of the networks that you're signed into, will disappear. And they'll all appear exactly the same, and uh, it'll look exactly like they were talking to you on the proper, you know, the normal bit of software to them, but for you, everything's in one window, it's very, very easy and simple. Skype is a, uh, a fantastic, fantastic bit of uh, software that lets you make voice over IP calls. It does what it does exceptionally well.